Matt Bernier taking a look at graded stakes action from Belmont Park Saturday afternoon. Big day of racing down in Elmont. Race number eight, the grade two John A. Nehru. They're going seven-eighths of a mile on the main track. Before we dive into the field, bets.drf.com is where you need to go as far as your wagering interests are concerned. Bets.drf.com for all the details as far as new sign-up members are concerned, existing customers are concerned, whatever it may be, bets.drf.com. Let's take a look at this field. We will rip through it very, very quickly. Uh, and it's an interesting race because the standout in here, or I shouldn't say the standout, but the horse that is a standout as far as the pace is concerned is also very likely the horse to beat. That is the number nine promises fulfilled. Let's start with the time form U.S. pace projector. You can see that they have the nine promises fulfilled out on a loose lead with a blue bar indicating that it could be favoring horses on or near the early lead. Promises fulfilled on his best day. He absolutely is the horse to beat in a race like this. Highest last out buyer and raw time form U.S. rating coming out of the Met Mile. Uh, I think this distance is beautiful for him. To me, he is best suited using that sort of, I hate to use the word high cruising speed. I think it's just the, the silliest term, but he's got good sort of sustained energy. He can just go out there and wing it and last for a while. Uh, I think promise is fulfilled. I wouldn't argue with anyone that wanted to put him right on top. I think he makes plenty of sense in here, but I do think there are some other intriguing alternatives. Uh, the five is the horse that they have sitting in second. That is Killy Beg's captain. I think he's a nice horse for John Terranova. The problem is this water seems like it's a little bit on the deep side. And to me, he is better off probably in a listed stakes type as opposed to any of these bigger graded stakes races. He's got nice speed. He doesn't have to go to lead, but I think he's at his best when he is out there dictating things. Uh, this distance, I don't think is an issue for him. He makes plenty of sense against lesser. I just don't know that he's going to be able to overcome uh, a horse like Promises Fulfilled and then hold off some of these quality closers. The horse that time form has sitting third is New York Central. New York Central for Steve, <clears throat> excuse me, for Steve Asmussen continues to improve. Uh, he most recently graded stakes winner, got the job done in the Maryland Sprint. The field decent enough, the runner-up pro forma. He came back and earned a 90 buyer in his next start. Third place finisher came back and earned an 86. Um, it was a perfect trip in the grand scheme of things for New York Central. Down on the inside, sitting the pocket. Eventually, the rail opens up. He shoots through. Nice ride from Ricardo Santana. He is here again to ride. Uh, eight to one on the morning line. I think that's nothing to sneeze at. That's a pretty square number on a horse that I do think has a big chance, especially because he doesn't have to come from way out of it. He's not pace dependent. And when the pace is a little bit on the light side, like it looks like, according to Time Form US, maybe New York Central is going to be a value play in a spot like this. Number one, Majestic Dunhill is the opposite. He is going to be up against it simply because he is a confirmed one-run closer. His most recent run, I thought it was fine in that Polynesian. Uh, he was down on the inside. Everything worked out for him. It opened up. He was able to come on through. Uh, he just wasn't quite good enough to get the job done. Cordmaker will be running later on in the Suburban. Um, I, you know, Majestic Dunhill is a nice horse. I could see him potentially getting a piece of this thing. I have a difficult time envisioning a scenario where he wins this race given the pace. And if I'm looking at the closers, I don't think he's the best closer in the race, so a little bit hard for me to make him on top. Number four is Nicodemus for Linda Rice. I think Nicodemus is very interesting in here. Uh, his run two starts back in the Westchester. He was a winner at a flat mile, sloppy sealed track. If for some reason the rains do come, certainly not going to hurt Nicodemus' chances. I really like him, though, because of the True North. The True North was run the day before Belmont Stakes Day on that Friday. Keep in mind, Belmont Stakes Day inside is where you wanted to be. It wasn't necessarily a speed friendly track. It was an inside favoring track. I believe on Friday it was inside and speed and Nicodemus has neither of those. He's going to be coming from the back and he was widest rolling for home in that race, the true north. And I love the way that he finished. He gets an extra half furlong to work with here. Perhaps the pace is sort of uh, against him. But I do think the quality is there, and this horse to me is sneaky. If you get it, something close to that 6-1 to one morning line, I like Nicodemus' chances. The number three, Warriors Club for Wayne Lucas. This is a horse to me, look, hard to knock a horse that's banked nearly $800,000 and 32 lifetime starts. I think he actually does some of his best running up at Saratoga. It's going to be his first start since the grade one Churchill Downs. I wonder if you come, you hope you get a decent effort out of him, and you get him ready for one of those races up at the spa because he just seems to take his race up there and take his game to the next level. Not suggesting he's not within a, in with a chance here. I just do wonder, once we get upstate, maybe that's when he's really going to flourish. We move on. The number six, Bon Raison. This is an interesting horse in here because from a number standpoint, that most recent race, especially from a Time Form US standpoint, stacks up quite well. 119 raw time form rating, 100 buyer speed figure, the... Fig the form and the figures were flattered as the runner-up came back and won next out with a 98 buyer. That was in a stakes race down at Monmouth Park. Uh, I thought it was a workmanlike performance. That was a starter allowance race. He's shown in the past the ability to come with a big effort. I don't know that he is quite good enough to run with these types, but if you're playing exotics, 
why not consider a horse like this underneath if he's sitting off the pace, comes with his run, going to be probably every bit of that 15 to 1 on the morning line. I think Bon Raison is an interesting underneath candidate. Don't know that he can win this race, though. The 7 do share. It seems like he's going to be running in this spot because he scratched from the race on Friday afternoon at Prairie Meadows. Now, he was a vet scratch leading into the True North. And, you know, it's one of those things. Who knows what the situation was? But let's also be honest. It was probably a good thing because the way that track set up, he had no chance to win that race. If he comes with a run like he did in the Tom Fool, he's arguably the horse to beat. The reason I liked him as much as I did in the True North was because it fit the same pattern. He ran in the Churchill Downs. He was the only one to make up any ground. Second start off the bench, he was going to fire similar to the way that we had that form cycle, the General George leading into the Tom Fool. Well, the problem is when he doesn't fulfill that form cycle and we're starting over again, I wonder if you get that late bid. He comes with it. Can't quite get there. Now he's tighter for a run up at Saratoga or somewhere else. Uh, do share. He's a horse that I like. I will be using him underneath. Um, I just don't know that I want him on top at a shorter price in here. Pat on the back is as cool a horse as you'll find for Jeremiah Englehart. A really rock solid New York bred. You know he's going to come with his bid. High 90 type of horse. Uh, he's never cracked a triple digit number. It might take that to win in a spot like this, but he's rock solid. The form of that most recent run, the commentator, it's holding up well. The concern I have with Pat on the back is twofold. First things first, and really the more important one, is it feels like he does his best. I don't want to say it feels like he, in fact, does his best against New York Breds. Uh, they tested him in the Cigar Mile three starts back. He didn't run poorly, but it certainly wasn't quite up to up to par with some of his better races against state Breds. Uh, the second sort of concern is this formulator fact here for Jeremiah Engelhart. Past five years, dirt, winner last out, graded stakes races, one for 19, only three times in the money with a 47 cent return on investment. It's, I'm not suggesting Pat on the back can't win this race, but at 4-1, to one, I'm a little bit leery about taking anything too, too short on him. If he were to float up for some reason, maybe I'd be intrigued. 4-1 to one in a race that this this salty, uh, I'm a little bit unsure. And the nine promises fulfilled, we've already discussed. He seems like he's the horse to beat on form. He is the horse to beat as far as the pace is concerned. And look, it, there's not much to knock here other than the price. 2-1. to one, if he goes off at two to one, I think he may be less than that. I think he could be in the seven to five range. If that's the case, are you content just taking that saying, you know what? <sighs> There's not, don't, no need to overthink this race. He's controlling speed. He's arguably the best horse and the speed, the pace looks to be on the softer side. Those are check, 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 check. He could just go out there and waltz. Uh, maybe that's going to be the case. I picked him second in here. Let's take a look and see where I ultimately landed up. I went with the number four Nicodemus for Linda Rice. I just thought that the way that he ran in that true north, I think it's so much better than it looks on paper. And if he can get back to a run similar to that Westchester two starts back, he is certainly right there in with a puncher's chance. Six to one on the line. Don't know if you get six. Maybe you get nine to two. I think Nicodemus has a chance. I went four, nine, two, and eight in the eight at Belmont Park on Saturday afternoon. Playing this race, any of the other races on a great card at Belmont Saturday. DRF Bets is the way to do it. Bets.drf.com for all of the details. Schedule post time for the grade two John A. Nehrud. Race number eight at Belmont Park on Saturday afternoon, 5.05 Eastern. Good luck.